Hey everyone, how's it going? In this video, we're gonna continue looking up ways to speed up your code. So in this video, it's gonna be a little bit more computer science-y and looking at how uh, we do iteration in computer science. So by iteration, I mean, you're probably familiar with a classical for loop. And this is um, one of the easiest for loops in Python. If you're not super familiar with Python, I'm gonna explain this to you and it's pretty easy to understand. So you might see this for i in range n. So n is just some integer. Let's say n is 5. So for i in range n is just a shorthand for saying let i be 0, then let it be 1, 2, 3, and then 4. So whatever number you put in here, it iterates from 0 up until that number minus 1 because we usually start at 0 in computer science, right? So that's what this would do. Now what about this guy? So for i in x range n, you may or may not have seen this x range function. And before I carry on, let me just say that this difference only matters in Python 2. Starting in Python 3, uh, range is the same behavior as x range. Um, but for the uh, purposes of instruction of this video, let's just say that these are different. So we're in Python 2 world for now. Uh, okay, so for i in x range n, if n is the same number, let's say 5, this is going to behave in exactly the same way. You're going to come inside this for loop. i is going to be 0, 1, 2, 3, and then 4. So on the surface, it seems like they're not any different. They're doing the same thing, right? Well, they will give you the same result, but they're doing it in two fundamentally different ways. And those two ways, um, to uh, in, a, in a more high level, are called iterator, which is the range way, versus a generator, which is the x range way. Now, to just kind of explain these at a high level, because we'll look at the code and we'll look at how fast these things are and how they compare with different size lists, so we'll get to that in a second. But first, let's make sure we understand the concept between an iterator and a generator in computer science lingo. So what does this do? For i in range n, let's say n is some massive number, like 100 million. The first thing this is going to do is pull in this range n thing, which is going to be the numbers between 0, 1, 2, all the way to this massive 9999 whatever number. It's going to pull that huge list into our working memory. That's going to take quite a while, right? Especially if the list is really, really, really big. So that's step number one. And then step number two, now that this big list is in memory, it can go ahead and easily just iterate over this entire list and do whatever work we would like to do inside the for loop. So that's pretty easy. Now, what does this for i in x range n do? Let's say n is the same number, 10, 100 million or whatever I said before. When we call x range n, this is not going to give us back this massive list into memory. Rather, this creates something called a generator. A generator you can think of as kind of a factory. It's named in a very nice way to help us understand that concept. Think of this generator as a little box. And this box basically gives us the next number that we care about as we need it. So when we go ahead and say for i in x range n, we're not pulling these 100 million numbers into memory all at once before we start our work. Rather, we're just creating a little factory. And as we work our way through the for loop, so on the first iteration of the for loop, what we do is we ask that factory, hey, what's the next number I need? It, the first number we need is, of course, 0. So the factory says, oh, here's 0. Then we come in and do the second iteration of the for loop and say, hey, factory, what's the next number we need? The next number is, of course, 1. So that gives us back that 1. And we do that for every single iteration of the for loop. Okay, so until we get to the very end, this big 999, uh, whatever number that is, it's going to give us back that number. Now, maybe you see why this is fundamentally different. Never are we actually pulling this massive list into our memory, which is a very slow operation. Rather, we're creating a factory, and we're maintaining the state, we're remembering where we left off, so that on the next iteration of that for loop, we can ask for, what's the next number? Uh, that should come from that factory. And then we can use that number inside our for loop to do some stuff. So that's why a lot of times generators, as we'll see in the code, can be faster because we're not spending all this time up front to pull this massive amount of data into memory and then starting our work. Rather, we can start the work just right away and then just pull these numbers as we need them. Now, some of you who are suspicious of free things might be thinking, hold on, why don't we just always use generators then? What is the point what is the trade-off we're making? And of course, in computer science, we're always making a trade-off of some kind, right? Well, uh, there's two situations here. Let's say that uh, in situation one, 
we're only calling either of these statements like once in a while, once in a blue moon or maybe once a day or something, then it might make, make, make sense to use a generator, right? Because we're just kind of calling it once, getting it over with. So why, why load all these things into memory for no reason? Then we use a generator in that case. Now let's say situation number two, we're calling either of these statements over and over and over again within our function. We're calling them maybe once every second or once every minute at a really high frequency. Then it might make more sense to use an iterator. And let's talk about why. So if we use an iterator, we pull all of these numbers into memory and we take that big upfront cost. It's gonna take us some time, but we have them. Now, every single minute or every single second that we're needing to iterate over this massive list of numbers, it's waiting for us in memory, it's there. And it's free, pretty much free for us just to iterate over it as many times as we want. Compare that uh, to a generator in that situation. Now, for a generator, if we're calling this loop every single minute, we are basically reestablishing this factory every single minute, and then we're asking for numbers from this factory over and over and over again, um, many, 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 many times. So that function call basically saying that, hey factory, give me the next number, hey factory, give me the next number, that can become more expensive than if we had just loaded all of these numbers up front, taken that hit um, up front, and then we just iterate over them because they're basically waiting for us free. So uh, the, the question of should I use an iterator or generator is not, a cut and clear answer. It really depends on what is the frequency at which you're calling this code? What are the settings at which you're calling this code? So again, it depends. But in many situations, generators can be faster. And let's take a look at that in the code. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a code look at how using an iterator versus a generator can sometimes help speed up our code. And let's see what kind of speed ups we can achieve. So as we said on the whiteboard, we're going to be using this built in range versus x range. Uh, difference in Python just because it's a built-in of the language therefore it's going to be easier for us to test but really this concept is going to apply with any uh, iterators or generators that you write yourself and we'll probably do a video on how to write both of those in the future so for now let's say that we have a list we're gonna have a list of size hundred million I think that's that number yeah hundred million so it's rather large if we do range n of course we get all the numbers from zero to 999 uh, and the number that's 100 million minus 1. So we see that printing that out gives us exactly that massive list. Uh, now if we do x range n, we don't get a massive list, we just kind of get something back that says x range 100 million, which is curious. Let's investigate further. Let's do a type on both of these things. So if we do type on range n, we get what we would expect. It's a list, a very big list. If we do type on x range n, it says it's a type called x range. It's not a list. In fact, it's really a generator. It's kind of like a factory that's going to give us the numbers between 0 and 100, 100 million minus 1 as we need them, rather than generating them all at the same time, which is what we see with range. Okay? So that's the conceptual difference as we saw on the whiteboard. Let's see how we uh, perform time wise using range versus x range. So we have two very small code snippets here, and we're doing a very simple operation. We're just going to be taking each element in the range or the x range and dividing it by two and taking that result and putting it in a new list. So let's look at the range code first. We start a timer. We initialize a new list to empty. For every element in range n, so 0, 1, all the way to 100 million minus 1, we go ahead and append that element divided by 2 to our new list. So our new list is just half of these elements. We get the time at the end and we print it out. We see that it took about 42 seconds for us to get through these 100 million numbers. Question is, how does that compare to using X range? If you look at the X range code down here, it's pretty much the same. The only difference is that I put the letter X in front of, in front of range, which makes it an X range, which is a generator, rather than having all these numbers live in memory um, as uh, at the beginning, okay? So we do the same thing for each element in X range N we have new list two, which is this list up here, dot append half of that element, and then we just get the total time, and we see it takes 36 seconds. So we have a little bit of a speed up, right? It took about eight seconds faster uh, versus 42 seconds. It's not like the crazy speed ups we saw in the vectorization or other videos, but it is still something that you should take into account if you're dealing with very, very big um, numbers, right? So before we close out this video, let's look at how does this time difference change based on the size of the list. Here, of course, we used a very massive list of size 100 million. But the real question is, 
as your list gets bigger and bigger, starting from very small values to bigger values, how does the performance of using range versus X range change? So to do that, we're going to be testing a bunch of different sizes, starting at 10,000 and ending at 1 million, okay? So, and uh, every size is going to be 10,000 more than the size before it. So we'll test 10,000, 20,000, 30,000, all the way to 1 million. So sizes is a rather large list. We have um, times range and times X range, which is just how long range and X range take for each of these different size lists. And this code isn't super important for you to look through detailed, but um, it's doing the same stuff as above. For every given size, we go ahead and traverse a range um, operator of that size. And then we also traverse the op uh, X range operator of that size. And we do the same thing. We do the element divided by two and add it to a different list. And we collect how long it took in each situation. Now doing that and plotting a graph so we can better understand this, uh, we see that the blue line here is range and the orange line is X range. So looking at the graph, so at the X axis would be how big is the list. So the leftmost would be 10,000, the rightmost would be 100 million, or sorry, 1 million. Uh, we see that the blue line is usually on top of the orange line, which means that range usually takes a little bit longer than X range. But notice that it's not always the case. There's um, little pieces here and there where the orange line, which is X range, actually takes longer. So it's not something where you uh, should always use X range, and that's the clear winner um, all the time. It really depends, and it's not always like a crazy speed up um, like we saw in other videos. But nonetheless, it is something to keep in mind. And something we didn't do in this video that we did talk about on the whiteboard remember is um, range is going to give you better performance if you're expecting to iterate over this big list of numbers um, often, right? Then you might as well just have these numbers live in memory so that you can traverse them um, just uh, every single time you need to. Whereas if you used X range for such a situation, then it would have to generate these numbers every single time, which would end up being more expensive in the long run. But X range and any type of generator is the better bet if you're just doing this not very often, just once in a while or just once, uh, then it's much better to kind of call these numbers or these objects as you need them rather than having them all just live in memory and having a huge upfront cost. Okay, so hopefully that helped to understand iterators versus generators and their performance a little bit better. And we'll do a whole video on how to write one of these in Scratch using Python in the future. Okay, so until next time.